viewers and welcome back to another Football Manager video. Something a little bit different for you today. You might remember a few years ago, I did a thousand years in the future database save and I had it under my control. I could see what was happening a thousand years in the future of football. And this time around, not quite as far, but really far, 800 years. And a big thank you to Darren Taylor, Daz R. Taylor on Twitter. And there'll be a link to him and the SI forum post in which this database will be posted on the Sunday after this video is released. So it's not available right now as you watch this live, but if you're watching in the future, ironically, uh, the save will be available to download and you can have a look yourself. 800 years. Eight, 2,824. I mean, how old will I be then? 834. Right. I wonder if I'll still be doing videos. So right, what we have is the top six divisions in England available for us to look at in this save. And my word, there's some interesting things going on in it. Uh, these are the six divisions you can look at with all the teams there as well. I should say that players' attributes aren't loaded for every team. If you if you were to take control of that team, you would, of course, be able to see the player attributes. Uh, so if there's a team out there you really want to take a, a, delve, a, delve, a delve a deeper look into, then you can do that if you download the database. I should note as well, the database is one gigabyte big. That's... That's quite big. So we'll look at World Cup winners, we'll look at some of the biggest transfers, but we'll start off with the Premier League. This is how the Premier League started in a, obviously this year or last year as, as the season started. And uh, if we now fast forward to this year, how many of these teams remain? Do you have a little guess? Have a little guess. Okay, let's see. So this then is the league table as we enter the 2824-25 season. Uh, and you'll notice straight away off the bat, some big teams do remain. Arsenal still there, Chelsea, Liverpool, Manchester City, Tottenham still in there, as well as some other Premier League uh, teams that like the likes of uh, West Ham are still there as well. Brighton, of course, are in there now. Hull City have been in the Premier League recently, as have Middlesbrough and Stoke City. So some teams have remained, but I think we all agree that the real stories here are Grey's Athletic, Leatherhead, Stafford Rangers, and Tunbridge Angels, which is just a great name for a team. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I don't want to upset Tunbridge Angels fans, but I wasn't, I wasn't really aware that you existed until now. But now I do know. I love the name. So let's use Tunbridge Angels as our example for this particular game. If we look through the history of Tunbridge Angels, you can see they've been floating around the Premier League for quite some time. A Championship team as well. It took them a good sort of 600, 700 years to get into the, the sort of. The the leagues that were loaded uh, they got into the National League South of course and then worked their way up slowly over time uh, making the Premier League a sort of about I don't know what would that be about 70 years after first getting into the, the leagues loaded uh, and then finally I've become a bit of a, a bit of a mainstay of the Premier League a bit of a you know, club, a bit of a West Brom you know and uh, do you know what Tunbridge Angels should be very proud of their achievements they've got a stadium of 80,000 they're, they're loving it the, the stadium was built uh, four years ago and You've got to enjoy it. I mean, you've got to enjoy the fact that there's teams in here. I mean, we'll take a look at a few of the other ones, shall we? Grey's Athletic are another one that have got in there. They've been a Premier League stalwart for however long. And uh, it, it's just... If, do you know what? I love saves like this because you just see football in a completely different way. Teams like Grey's Athletic, you can even picture or imagine being in the Premier League at this point. Leatherhead, another example. Le Leatherhead, by the way. We'll come on to Leatherhead in a moment. One of the best teams the world have ever seen. Forget football generally. The world have ever seen. Uh, 60,000 capacity stadium. In fact, let's look at the stadiums off the Premier League side, shall we? Because these are some phenomenal things you can see. As you can see there, the, all the stadium names, generally speaking, have changed. West Ham, and I absolutely love it, are still at London Stadium. Because of course they are. Still not happy about it. Still, the taxpayers still shelling out. So, hmm. But you can see the biggest stadium is Aldridge Stadium, Chelsea Stadium. It's a 132,000 seater capacity stadium. Which, it's just exciting. Of course, you can, as you can imagine, uh, Aldridge is named after a Chelsea legend at the club. Uh, Lewis Aldridge, who was a backroom staff member. Uh, I might as well tell you a little bit about him to give you an example of how crazy some of these managers can be. Uh, he lived in the Premier League on around eight different occasions. He's won Champions Leagues and all sorts in a 16-year spell as Chelsea manager. Previous to that, he obviously was manager uh, England, Watford, Tranmere, Exeter, Port Vale, MK Dons, and Lowest of Town, which is just quite nice, quite local to me as well, um, and, and was probably the most successful manager of all time. But there, though, he looks a little bit older, doesn't he? Bless him. But it's nice that Chelsea legends, you look at like, the, sort of the top five of those, they're all familiar names to us, and then the bottom seven or six are names that obviously have come up and, and taken football by storm in the last few years. And uh, yeah, back to the stadiums, though. There's five stadiums in the in the Premier League 
that have got over a hundred thousand capacity. I just think I just find that phenomenal. I just love it, and the fact that those teams are Hull City, Stoke, QPR, Manchester City. Maybe you could understand, and I love that uh, Stoke Stadium. By the way, so Stanley Matthews Stadium. I like the sound of that. Uh, if we go through, then of course there were some big hitters not named in this Premier League table, most notably Manchester United, but they're not too far away. They are indeed in the Championship. And the Championship actually has quite a lot of the sides that are in the Premier League already, as well as again some names that you might not expect. Telford United are up there uh, in this division, but Manchester United. I'm sure there'll be people out there wondering what on earth happened then to Manchester United well again bit of a yo-yo club really they've been around a little bit we'll take a look at their history quickly so if you take a look at the highlighted league that's where they started two second places back to back then won the league in very consistent fashion and then continued to be a Premier League side for as you can see from the scrolling a very long time it took until there 2312 so if you're waiting for the demise of Manchester United you're going to be waiting quite a long time but they finally got relegated from the league now interestingly here they finished 19th and then bounced back immediately but then, after some difficult spells in the league, became a bit of a yo-yo club. Down in the championship for a long time, getting into playoffs and not quite getting up. Uh, they even went down to League One at one point, where they finished in the playoffs on both occasions. And on the second occasion, did get promoted back to the championship and eventually found their way back to the Premier League after a little bit of time. Never went further down than League One, though. Uh, and have been in the Premier League for a long time, although recently have been more so a championship side and have struggled to stay consistently in the Premier League. In fact, last year, I noticed, just got relegated. Manchester United, Manchester United, Manchester United. If we just take a look then at the previous year, uh, you can see that Stoke City just... <laughs> I love that Arsenal are fourth. I had no idea. I love it. We've got 800 years in the future and Arsenal are still finishing fourth. Is Arsene Wenger still in charge? No, he's not. Arsene Wenger no longer in charge. Uh, but my, what, that's wonderful. Genuinely wonderful that we've gone that long down. And that, oh, dearie me. Manchester United recently relegated then Tottenham down there as well in the 16th position. Although I say that like, oh my God, Tottenham are down there. There, but it's 800 years in the future the fact they're still in the Premier League is somewhat of an achievement Liverpool finishing in mid-table Chelsea in 7th City in 6th and uh, I love that Arsenal uh, in 4th Leatherhead though champions of the Premier League, champions of England, and uh, they've been relatively successful. So, this is what Leatherhead have achieved in recent years, most notably. Uh, 11 Premier League titles, 5 Champions Leagues, some Club World Cup championships in there as well, as well as a couple of Europa Leagues, 8 FA Cup wins, they've won the Championship 5 times, uh, some EFL Cup wins in there as well, and 9 Community Shields. It's fair to say that Leatherhead FC have done rather well. And speaking of the Champions League, let's look then. Who are the dominant teams around Europe? Now, because only England England was the simulated save. The big clubs in other nations tend to stay the same, although we'll come to Marseille in a moment, who are ridiculous. So if you take a look then at the size that have been winning uh, up and down Europe recently, it's QPR and Stoke, recent Champions League winners, both beating Real Madrid. Uh, Barcelona, of course, still up there as well. Leatherhead, you're, really, you're looking for the English teams that have dominated for, for periods. Hull City went on a mesmeric time uh, and just was continually winning Champions Leagues, season in, season out, absolutely loving it. Chesterfield were another side that were doing very, very well in the Champions League. There's some obviously more notable names in there as well. Liverpool in there, Spurs, Chelsea uh, doing very, very well. PSG pop up occasionally. Arsenal won it three years in a row, beating Manchester City in the final three, to, uh, three years in a row. Manchester City also went on a little dominant spell at some point. Derby County got themselves some Champions League wins, five to their name potentially. Uh, and it's just... I would love football to be flipped on its axis, maybe just for a year, and we just see what happens. I don't know how it would work, but I, I, it doesn't matter how it would work. It just sounds fun, doesn't it? Okay, the player with the most value, and I said I'd mention Marseille briefly. They are the three most valuable players in world football. Sander Brewer, I think, is the man. And you can see he's not... I mean, is he anything that would... I guess when I clicked this, you probably thought you'd see about 1520s in his, in his card. But no... He's, uh, he's pretty good. I think it's fair to say he's pretty good. £78 million. Recently signed from Grey's Athletic to Marseille for £83 million. Uh, not a bad little transfer for them. But again, not an absolute world beater. I mean, inflation is a problem. I mean, that's their central midfielder, Dimitri Weber's. He's... He's decent. Right, let's look at the biggest transfers and then we'll finish off with some World Cup stuff. If you'd like me to do another video of this save and take a look at some other little bits and pieces, do drop a like and I'll uh, if we hit a certain target, let's say if we hit 1,500 likes, then we'll do another one of these videos and we'll do sort of part two, looking through the leagues, maybe looking through a few more clubs. And in fact, if you've got suggestions of things you think would be interesting for us all to look at, then uh, leave those in the comment section down below and we can make this maybe a three or four part series. Okay, let's look then as it loads for me the leading transfers of all time. So I've got a pretty good computer, but Football Manager in the future takes a little while to load. And I thought this is this would be my example for you. You see, I've clicked it a little while ago now, and we're just waiting to see. Now here we are. Then these are the biggest fees of transfers 
in world football, and I mentioned Marseille, this is kind of what I meant. If we if we sort it by teams, that's a lot of players moving to Marseille for a lot of money. I don't know how much money Marseille have got. And I mean, they, they, they only play in a 60,000-seater stadium. It's surprising to me that they're this good. I would assume, based on the overlook and the overview... 115 Champions Leagues. Uh, they've won the league on 262 times. That's a lot, isn't it? That is I, that. Mm, stating the obvious there, maybe, but that's a lot. 115 Champions Leagues. 115 Champions Leagues. Right. You got to think the save's been going for 800 years. One in eight times, Marseille will win. That's that's mad. So you can see they are the biggest fees then, and there isn't a well, the, the, the most recent one was 2027. It was the Chelsea from PSG uh, Amino. I mean, you can click these players, but you can't see much more detail other than who they played for uh, and what they achieved at those clubs in terms of goals scored, which is a shame. I, mean, I wish you could see slightly more. Uh, well, actually, there you are. Look, you can see you can see slightly more. He played for Manchester United for a spell. Chelsea as well. Uh, I guess he was a centre back or a defensive player. He doesn't strike me as a striker with that goal. Oh, midfield left. Okay, so he's probably more of an assister than a goal scorer. Sadly, we can't look at how many assists he got. But he had a pretty successful career, I think it's fair to say. So the biggest transfer then was from Chelsea. I love, sorry, it's just called Chesterfield to Marseille was one of the biggest transfers. 190 million Chesterfield sold a player for. David Kasunga. Right you are. Yeah, fine. Any other weird teams? Chesterfield also bought a couple of players for massive money. QPR are in there as well. Uh, it's, always just interesting. it's always interesting, I think, to see the teams that have risen. And QPR, despite it sort of being a, a decently like size, size, sized club in England, it just became ridiculously big, as did Hull City as well, as I guess. Uh, right then, this Andre Martins Jr. Let's take a look at him. He went to Marseille. I'll say again, not a goal scorer, attacking midfielder on the right hand side. And in terms of history, again, we're not, we're not a prolific goal scorer. He was a winger, uh, but spent some time at Chelsea and Marseille before that was a Brazilian uh, player as well. Uh, was there any strikers? I like to see godlike strikers. I have a soft spot for any strikers that are just amazing. Actually, what I thought we'll do is we'll see if there was any players that dominated player of the year. That might be the best way. Rather than doing it by transfer value, as that's not always a great indicator of how much a player's worth, let's see if there's a player that did sort of a bit of a Messi or Ronaldo and dominated world football uh, in terms of winning awards. Now, if I search this by name, that should be more useful. Right, I'll scroll through. We can see there's a few players that have won it a lot, but I'm wondering if, if we've got anyone that's won it more than nine times. You've got to think, a footballer's career generally speaking goes on for about 15 years nine might be the maximum i love that that lionel messi is still absolutely ridiculous and, and the, the amount of times he's won it is obscene i should say he's doing it for five years in a row after sort of as, as the first five years of the save went so he's pretty prolific but that really shows you that in like that's probably a good example of the fact that we, we value messi and ronaldo right now as the two superstars of football but you can't understate that throughout maybe 800 years in the future we'll never see the like of this again so i think that that's something to be said that we shouldn't compare messi and ronaldo as much as we should appreciate just how good those two players are edgar oliver for hull he got quite a few there's a few other players in here that have won it again like five or six times jose roa for us oh, so actually let's look at him then because he's been around a little bit this could be a good one i've just seen Leon Rook. Okay, I changed my mind. Leon Rook. Okay, midfield right. Again, interesting though for me that these players aren't strikers. I want a striker. All right, was, was Jose Roa? Was he a striker? Midfield left. They're all midfielders. Did any strikers win this? Okay, this lad, Giuseppe Corazzole. He was the guy we looked at right at the very start. He was, again, prolific. But again, a right winger. Spent time at Barcelona. Well, what a career this guy had. Pescara Calcio. Then early on moved to Milan. Then Barcelona. Then PSG. Then Atletico Madrid. And then had his best time or his best spell in Marseille. There we are then. My goodness gracious. So a lot of the players, interestingly, a lot of the, world, well, the, the, the ones that were consistently winning anyway, not strikers. Actually, you look at who won it this year, none of which are strikers. Uh, but some of which look pretty good. Uh, it's Richard Stensland from uh, from well, at Marseille. You can see why. You can understand why. He's for, for well, considering he's not a striker, scores a lot of goals. Right, let's finish things off by looking at the World Cup again. We can look at other things at another time if we do another video of this like. Okay, so here we have the past winners of the World Cup, and as it's not necessarily that surprising uh, a lot of the teams that are winning it are the teams that have won it previously you're looking at the likes of spain germany argentina uh uruguay even back in there a few a few hundred years later uh holland are there brazil italy have won it back to back recently as well it, it may well be a case that there are the occasional surprising ones in fact let's search it by winner and see if there's any Armenia won it once. Armenia. I mean, it's just unexpected. that I wasn't expecting it. I mean, Austria just below them, probably not expecting to win it that often either. The best thing about it is that currently, Armenia are the 31st best nation, but at some point in their history, they won the World Cup, and I love that. Okay, did England win it more than... I mean, we've won it once. Three times. Three! 
France are loving life. Greg Dyke was like, oh yeah, by 2022 or whatever it was, we'll be we'll be right up there contending. Huh? Three times. Imagine waiting that long. So Football Manager predicts we won't win it in my lifetime, which is very disappointing. Three times. Croatia have, have won it four. I mean, Germany won it a lot. Jesus Christ, Germany. Calm, calm yourselves down. Okay, other sides that might be surprising. Ivory Coast won it at one stage. Japan, Mali had it as well. Uh, Russia are in there as, as winning at one time. Turkey won it a couple of times as well. We, we saw that quite recently as well. And I guess, is that to be expected? How many times have, has a team won it the most then? So Germany have won the World Cup. I love it. Germany have won the World Cup 44 times. Because of course they have. You can simulate a game for 800 years and by the end of it, Germany will still win the World Cup the most amount of times. Uh, overtaking Brazil, of course. Okay, what I'm going to do is list the teams in alphabetical order and go through the divisions that are loaded. Just so for the, if you want to see the teams that are in those divisions, you can do that now as I just sort of talk through uh, at the end of the video. Of course, if you want to see some more of this sort of thing, do leave a like on the video or subscribe so you can see the future videos on this. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to look through a few other little bits and pieces. These are the teams then that have, have had, I mean, some of them in here. Whitehawk in League One. I mean, some of the League One teams are amazing, actually. Hemel Hempstead Town. Maybe we'll look at this uh, in depth more later on in League Two. To. Again, is there any major sides in there that have dropped down the divisions? Watford, maybe a Premier League side of now that have fallen down into League Two. But for 800 years, I still find that quite impressive. Uh, Norwich with the Valorama National League with Preston, uh, Portsmouth still there, Blackburn as well, of course, a former Premier League winner of now. And uh, yeah, if you want to see more of this, then uh, leave a comment. Let me know something you want to see in a future video so we can sort of plan those around your suggestions and we'll look at what we've got. As I say, the top six uh, divisions in England, so or top maybe seven divisions in England. Uh, so keep that in mind when making suggestions for uh, for future things to look out for so if you enjoyed the video do drop a like and i will see you again soon this is good fun i love these sorts of saves and again you can check it out all in the description thank you again to darren for allowing me access to this and i'll see you again soon we love with care from it's adventure so next time goodbye